call the March 5th uh, meeting of the Common Council to order. I will ask our clerk to call the roll. Alderman Vitale. Here. Weigel. Here. Barzak. Here. Scherpleski. Here. Voitnayer. Here. Haas. Here. Lysak. Here. May is excused. Frankie. Here. Rote. Here. That's nine present. We have a quorum. <clears throat> Please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led this evening by Alderman Vitale. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have several items up for public hearing this evening, six to be exact. Um, I will ask our clerk to read public hearing number one. Resolution to confirm and adopt the report of the city engineer containing the schedule of proposed assessments for improvement of South 55th Street from West Mobile Street to West Electric Avenue, <clears throat> South 58th Street from West National Avenue to West Greenfield Avenue, South 59th Street from West Mobile Street to West Lincoln Avenue, West Grant Street from South 60th Street to West Beloit Road, and portions of intersecting streets by concrete reconstruction, new concrete sidewalk, <coughs> new driveway approaches, storm sewer, storm sewer relay, sanitary sewer relay, water main relay, building services, and utility adjustments. Thank you. Mr. Daniels? Thank you, Mayor Devine. Okay, as he said, this is the public hearing for four different streets, 55th, 58th, 59th, and Grant. Here's the procedures I'll go through tonight. I'll go through the project scope and the cost. We'll discuss assessment rates and methods of payment. Then we'll have a time for comments and questions from the Common Council, and then also time from citizens. Uh, then the public hearing will be closed, and it'll be referred to the Board of Public Works which we'll meet tonight, and then it will come back here later tonight for a final decision. So here's the first street, 55th Street from Mobile to Electric, uh, then 58th Street, very short, from National to Greenfield, uh, 59th Street from Mobile to Lincoln, and then Grant Street from 60th all the way to, uh, to Beloit. Uh, this is actually an old aerial photo from 1949 that shows the pavement that's still out there. This, this pavement was put in in 1928. This is Grant Street. There used to be a gas station there at Beloit. Um, I mean, this road was put in at a time when only 20% of the population had a car in 1928. Uh, and this filling station, I guess, was called the Zenith Filling Station at the time. Well, here's some pictures of 55th Street. So 55th Street was originally paved in 1928, so that concrete pavement that's underneath these, uh, these potholes is actually still there, 91 years old. Then this asphalt was installed in 1980, so that's 39 years old, and it's severely uh, deteriorated. Uh, 58th Street is also in horrible shape. The concrete pavement underneath here was from 1925, so that's 94 years old, and then this asphalt that you see in the picture was laid in 1972, so that's 47 years old. Uh, so the base, this concrete base from 1925 is completely failed under here, and um, the road is, is falling apart. And then there's 59th Street. The concrete paving, once again, was in 1928, so that's 91 years old. The asphalt, again, was 1972, so that's 47 years old. Um, this is what we call alligator cracking when, the, when there's, uh, it looks like the back of an alligator, there's far too many cracks at this point for DPW to try and fill the cracks. Uh, the road is pretty much in, in the final stage of its life. And then Grant Street as well. Uh, Grant Street was paved in 1928, as I mentioned, so that's 91 years old. The asphalt was put over the top in 1972, that's 47 years old, and it's also badly cracked and there are some potholes. Uh, so it's, it's, it's lasted far longer than I think anyone ever imagined it would at 91 years. But not only the street, the sewer and the water main underneath the streets are also uh, up to 100 years old. So the, we'll be relaying new water main on most of these streets, the existing water mains from 1909 to 1923. So that's 96 to 110 years old. 
Uh, we will be putting in new copper water pipes to replace the public portion up to the sidewalk. Uh, then I'm gonna talk later about the private portion, which would be done on a voluntary, voluntary basis. Uh, we're putting in new storm sewer and laterals for homes that want a sump pump. We would put the lateral in. The existing storm sewer is 1928. That's 91 years old. We'll be putting in new sanitary sewer where it hasn't previously been put in. A lot of these streets had sanitary put in, uh, in the, on these dates, 1992, 2009, because it was already collapsing. Uh, so the rest of the sanitary sewer will be replaced uh, from 1910 to 1923. Uh, so that's 96 to 109 years old. And then all new street lighting and cable, uh, the existing cable and wires, uh, poles, are actually 80, 84 years old. They go back to 1935. So everything will be replaced. Everything will be new. Um, and then, like I said, I want to talk about these forms that you all got. So basically, the city is offering... $13,700 in home improvements for a cost of about $2,200. It's all voluntary. You don't have to do any of it, but we just we thought we would offer. Uh, so here's the first one is the lead water pipes. I just want to assure everyone that the water is safe. Our water comes from Lake Michigan via the Milwaukee Water Works. Water is tested and meets all federal guidelines for safety. Milwaukee has been adding phosphate to the water to form a protective coating on the inside of the pipe, so your water actually isn't even touching the lead, the lead service pipes. Um, but there are, that being said, there are still ways that some lead could get into the water. If you, if you let the water stand in your pipe for, for, for a couple weeks while you're on vacation, it could leach some lead through there. Or any physical disturbance of the piping, such as uh, street construction or something like that, could shake some of that phosphate loose and uh, get some lead in your water, which is why the city will be offering free water filters to any residents on this project. If, if you don't have one already, we'll give you one for free. We don't want any, uh, any lead getting in during construction, so um, keep that in mind. So here's kind of the particulars. There is a $1,600 charge uh, the city did get a grant from the US EPA and the DNR to pay for most of it. Uh, we would be putting in new copper pipes. This is a voluntary program. Um, property owners pay the $1,600. The grant covers the other $3,400. Um, $1,600 would be treated as a special assessment, so you could, you could put that on a 10-year payment plan at 4% interest if you wanted to. Uh, if you really don't think you can afford the $1,600, we actually do have uh, some other programs through our housing office, a housing rehabil rehabilitation grant program that would pay 100% of the cost if you qualify. Uh, there's also a housing rehabilitation loan program that would offer a 2.5% interest rate versus the 4% that uh, we offer for most of our payments. Uh, the work would be done with a trenchless technology, meaning they wouldn't be digging a trench through your yard. They would be pulling the pipe or, or boring the pipe under the yard uh, so they wouldn't disrupt most of your yard. Um, but if you do want to do this, we do have an agreement that you would have to sign. So uh, we do need you to return these forms with your choices so that we can get you to the agreement that you would need to sign. Then the next program is the sump pump installation, which is completely free, $0. Uh, the city is offering to install the sump pump for free. It's about a $4,500 value if you agree to pay for the storm lateral. We don't, want, um, we don't want you discharging the water and causing trouble for your neighbors, so we're, we're insisting that you put in the storm lateral for $662 to discharge the sump pump too. This work is paid for by MMSD through their private property inflow and infiltration program and strives to reduce the risk of any bas uh, basement backups. Uh, by allowing the clean rainwater to not enter, by preventing the clean rainwater from entering the sanitary sewer, that helps reduce the costs uh, for MMSD and could prevent uh, basement backups in the future. But this, this, again, is a voluntary program. You don't have to do it if you don't want it or if you already have one. Um, then there's the sanitary lateral rehabilitation, which is also free. Uh, this is where we are 
putting a new lining in the inside of your sanitary lateral. That's that sanitary lateral is what drains your toilet and your your shower and your sinks. Um, the wastewater drains to MMSD for treatment, so they are, they have the come up with this program because they don't want to treat rainwater. That's what causes the dumping into the lake. So it will remove the clear, clean rainwater from the system. Uh, if you have leaky joints, it would, it, you know, would cover over those leaky joints and would also reduce any uh, backups caused by tree roots trying to get through your lateral, which uh, happens a lot of times. Uh, the goal here, too, is to use trenchless technology. These guys are just pulling it through through the line in the front yard. Um, the funding is from MMSD, as I said. It's worth about $3,500, but once again, it is on a volunteer basis. Uh, I'm going to talk about traffic calming. I know I've gotten complaints in the past to, uh, about uh, some speeding on Grant Street by the school, uh, and we are probably going to do take some actions here that I'll show you, but. Um, we did do some speed studies on 50, uh, let's see, 59th Street and Grant. We figured uh, the other two streets were too short, but uh, 59th Street had about 283 cars. Usually if it's under 1,000, uh, that's usually acceptable to residents. The average speed was only 21 miles an hour. The speed that 85% uh, of the people were going was 27 miles an hour. Uh, there was uh, one goofy guy that was going 50 miles an hour, I guess, but... Um, then on Grant Street, it was about the same story, 600 vehicles per day. Uh, the average speed was about 20. Uh, most people were going 24 or below. Uh, the, there again, there was somebody going exceptionally fast. But um, So these streets aren't really showing a lot of speeding. Um, typically, we'd look for you know, the 85th percentile speed to be over 28. But, but I'm just pointing it out there in case people have comments on that. We can do... Some of the traffic calming, like these bump outs here, are kind of a, it's like a bottleneck. It kind of slows people down. Uh, that's probably the kind of thing we're going to do at Longfellow School, just to shorten the distance for the kids crossing the road and to kind of slow people down. Um, these measures are completely free to property owners. They don't cost the city anything really either. Um, here's some more, uh, you know, I think most of the, the slow speeds on these streets were because there is a lot of parking on street, and parking on street does tend to slow people down. Uh, I wanted to mention that we are probably going to have to narrow the street by six inches on each side because the trees, the trees do not allow for the paving machine to get by. When this street was built in 1928, there probably weren't any trees. Um, so the road will be narrowed a little bit. Uh, to save the trees. We don't want to have to cut the trees down, but by doing that, we're probably also helping to slow people down uh, because narrower streets kind of slow people down. But no parking would be lost by slightly narrowing the street. Here's some other ideas if, if people are interested. We have put traffic circles on other streets to slow people down. Um, we have put these bump outs on other streets. They're more effective than having a policeman or a stop sign out there because they're there 24 hours a day and uh, stop signs are mostly ignored. Uh, so these types of things force people to slow down because the road is a little bit narrower. But if, if that's not something people want, we, we won't do that either, so it's voluntary. Um, I just wanted to mention that this project has a lot of sustainability benefits. The gravel used will be 100% recycled crushed concrete from old pavements, so we don't have to mine new uh, gravel. They'll have recycled fly ash from coal electric plants used in the concrete, so we don't have to mine for new cement. Uh, the asphalt would have recycled asphalt uh, in it as well, so we don't have to drill for new materials. And then we will be putting in new LED streetlights that will reduce the electricity use by about 66%. So this is what the street will look like when it's done. It'll be a brand new concrete street with new sidewalk, new curb, new driveways, new pavement. This is what the project was, well, all four of the projects will cost together. All four of these streets together will be $2.7 million. So the pavement's about a million. The street lighting is about 139,000. Sanitary sewer 
470,000, storm sewer 453,000, water main 569,000. So for all four streets together, we'll be spending about $2.7 million. But the, the funding for this is coming from various sources, not just special assessments. Um, the stormwater fund that you all pay on your water bill is paying for the storm sewer. The water utility fund that you pay on your water bill is paying for the water main. Uh, general city taxes that all 60,000 people in the city pay is paying for 34%. Special assessments are only covering about 11%, or 297,000, and then the sanitary sewer would come from the sanitary sewer fund, which is also on your water bill, and those are all citywide fees that everyone pays. So all of these are citywide fees except for the special, special assessment. Now I'm aware that uh, many of the properties on this, in these four streets are corner properties or they've paid for their alley in the past or they've paid for other streets in the past. That's a very common phenomenon. Uh, you know, we did Lincoln, we've done Greenfield recently, we did 59th recently, um, 62nd, 63rd in 2014, so that was five years ago. 60th Street <coughs> was nine years ago. Um, Grant Street to the east of 60th Street was in 2008, and then we've done a bunch of alleys uh, on the east side too in all these years. But that's actually a fairly frequent occurrence. There are 10,000 parcels throughout the city of the 19,000 that do pay for more than one side of their property. So that's 55% of <coughs> all the properties are paying for more than one side of their property. Uh, there's actually 3,400 parcels out of the 19,000 that are paying for the more than one street. And then there's 7,400 7, parcels out of the 19,000 that are paying for their street and their alley. Um, so that's very common. Uh, we do give a discount on the longer side, so you don't pay the full rate on both sides. So this is, this is an example for someone who is on a corner, say the long side of their lot, like on Grant Street, is about 113 feet. Assessment rates $59.25 per foot for everybody. Um, so that comes to $6,600, but then we take 60% off. So we subtract $4,000, leaving the cost of $2,600. Uh, and if you have a driveway, like I think some people do, the driveway is an extra $7.40 uh, to pay for your driveway. So the bills for this would not go out until March of 2020. Now, it's not 2019, it won't be until 2020. So you've got a year, uh, and at that point then you could choose whether it would be a lump sum or a five-year plan or a 10-year plan. So if you choose the 10-year plan for this $2,600 assessment, the first year that in 2020, so that would be in December of 2020, uh, you, would have, you would have a payment of $375. And then in the 10th year, in the year 2029, you uh, would pay $278 for the whole year. So why do we special assess? Well, for over 110 years, city residents have historically paid the full cost in the old days of when those pictures were taken of the, the 1928. So in those days, they paid the full cost of the street in front of their house because they were enjoying the unique benefit from this new street. It was improving their curb appeal. It was, a, it was an improvement to their house. Uh, on this project, as I said, the, the special assessments are only covering about 11% of the total cost. Um, the assessment rate is $59.25 per foot for all residential properties anywhere in the city. doesn't matter where you live. doesn't matter how wide your street is. doesn't matter if you live on Lincoln or if you live on a cul-de-sac. You're going to pay $59.25. doesn't matter how much traffic you have on your street. So everyone is treated completely equally with that $59. Um, this has been the state law for over 100 years in Wisconsin. Um, there have been over 100 court cases uh, that have upheld this law as a fair and reasonable method to recoup the cost of these projects. So this is certainly a method that has stood the test of time um, in Wisconsin. Uh, special assessments are the only way to we, the, we ensure that tax-exempt schools, churches, charities, hospitals, county parks, utilities, and railroads pay their fair share too. So no one is exempt from special assessments, even though there are 430 properties in the city that do not pay any property taxes. 
And many of these tax-exempt schools and churches and hospitals and county parks are very large properties that actually encompass about 28% of the whole city. Uh, and they only contribute to the city's costs through these special assessments. Uh, likewise, businesses, corporations, and manufacturers pay a higher assessment rate to ensure that they contribute their fair share. Their assessment rate's actually $74 to $88 per foot. And just as an example, Longfellow element, Elementary School will be paying $9,282 in special assessments, even though they don't pay any property taxes to the city. So they are paying their fair share too. Uh, this is a map that kind of uh, brings home what I just said, that there are 430 properties that are tax exempt. These are all the tax exempt properties in the city. And if you add up all the acres, 1,600 acres, that's 28% of the total acreage in the city. Uh, so special assessments are the only funds that they pay to the city. And if, if we didn't have them pay their fair share, then the tax burden to all the properties would be even higher and that, would, that wouldn't be fair to everybody else. So uh, this is how we can get them to pay their fair share. This is a map of every property, at least on the east side, that has paid a special assessment in the last 10 years. So the colors, represent different years when assessments were paid. So it's, it's pretty much everybody. So everybody's in the same boat. Everybody's probably already paid for their street or their alley, and now they're paying for another street or another alley. Um, so it, it really would be impossible to do any construction on the east end of town without hitting somebody who's already had to pay a special assessment in the last 10 years, uh, and yet this is, you know, these are the streets that are 90 years old, these are the sewers that are 100 years old, so we really need to get going on fixing these streets and these sewers um, in spite of uh, people having to pay multiple times. Why do we charge 4% interest? Well, the city borrows the funds for this project. We borrow, we, we issue municipal bonds to bondholders over the next 10 years, so that's what we're paying the bondholders is 4% interest. We're passing that interest on to the new resi residents that choose the five or the 10 year plan. The city does not make a profit off the interest charged. Uh, there will be times during construction when you will not be able to park on the street. Um, on street parking is gonna have to be on neighboring streets. Um, you will not need a permit to do that. And the police will uh, be aware of that and they will uh, keep a watch on the neighborhood. If you are uh, disabled, um, we can make arrangements. If you have any of these uh, stickers or plates, we can put it in a handicapped spot around the corner or on a, a side street if that's needed. Uh, we've done that many times before, so let us know if that's something that you need. Um, here's a little bit on the timeline. Um, we're gonna go to bid. We're gonna start advertising for bids on about April 17th if the council approves this. Uh, the gas company does have to come in and do some work in May. Uh, they are a separate entity from us, so they will come in and do uh, some trenching like this and put in some new gas main. We hope to open bids then uh, on May 1st. The city does not get to pick the contractor. State law says we have to hire the low bidder who's qualified. Um, then on May 7th, we'd have the council award the contract and uh, get the contract signed and hopefully get the work started about June 3rd if the weather permits. There are four streets on this contract, so each one will have its own deadline. I don't have those dates yet because the contractor will uh, have to give us their schedule at that time, but we would plan on having all four streets done by November 15th, uh, and the contractor would post, post a performance bond to guarantee their work. Uh, if they went past any of the deadlines, each street will have its own deadline. There would be a $2,000 per day penalty if they go, back, go past the deadline. Uh, and then the, the, the private uh, work in your basement, the, the home improvements, you know, the, the sewer work in, uh, for the lead service or the san sanitary sewer lining, that work would be under a separate contract, probably starting in October or December. Um, the contractor that we hire to do the sewer work probably doesn't have any plumbers on staff. They don't usually don't have plumbers. Uh, and we are getting uh, federal money to do this, so we, we're keeping it separate. It'll be a separate contract that starts after the, uh, the street is done, if you choose to do that. 
So at this point, if there's any comments or questions, we will try to answer them. Thank you for the presentation, Mr. Daniels. We'll start with questions from the Common Council or comments. Alderman Mike. Alderman Chaplesky. Uh, Pete, in your presentation, you had said that you bring the water line to the sidewalk. Right. Well, you meant to the lot line, correct? Well, wherever your water stop box is, there's a valve. It varies. Uh, it could be in the sidewalk. It could be in the terrace. That is, that's where we would stop if you choose not to go any further, because right. that is, <coughs> that's the division between the public and the private, that water box. Okay. So that, that varies where that is. Oh, I see, okay. And um, I got a phone call from someone who lives on the corner and has uh, ran into the problem where the alley was done and then the street in front of their house was done mm -hmm. and now they're doing the street inside their house. How do you pick which street is done and when? We have a rating system. We rate all the streets on a scale of one to 10. Um, most of the streets we're doing are threes. We, we don't really have any ones because that would be gravel. And twos are pretty much gravel. Um, so it's hard to pick streets to avoid, like you saw on that map, when we, everyone on the east end of town has already paid one special assessment. Uh, we try and space it out at least five years. Uh, so I think most of the alleys and uh, like 62nd, 63rd Street were done in 2014. So I mean, we're trying to give at least five years space in between there so that they're not hit back to back year after year. But it's hard because there's so much work to be done. You know, the whole east half of the city, the whole east half of the city was built in about 1928. As you saw, all four streets were pretty much built in 1928. So they're all falling apart at the same time. But we can't, we can't rebuild them all at the same time, but we, we do need to get on it because, you know, they're going to get in pretty bad shape if we space it out too much. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, the whole east half of the city was built, you know, 26, 27, 28, when Alice Chalmers was humming. And um, now we're, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alderman Vitale. Yeah, Pete, first of all, I mean, I, I appreciate really to the extent, uh, I always say that you're doing a great job from beginning to the end to uh, be to the point, you know, for the special assessment and the way the programs works. So the question that I have, I mean, I, I'm for the Longfellow area for calming the traffic, you know, like a grant from 60th all the way to Beloit Road, you know, I think it would be ideal. But then for the side streets, we should be refraining uh, of narrowing down, you know, say take a six inch on one side or 10 inch on the other side to calm the traffic down because this year we've been experiencing a lot of problems with, uh, you're aware of that, with snowfall, you know, snow banks. You know, you go on the east side, the side most of the side streets, you do experience car park on both sides, the plow can even go through, or even a car sometimes, I mean, they have to really slow down to go through. So that's why the side streets are not really in favor to, uh, in the future, by doing this product, you know, this proposal of, of doing our, reconstruct our streets, you know, because it really causes some problem. I mean, if it was like in a warm neighborhood, I mean, area, then it would be, I think, but neighborhood like us, you know, the way winter is, it's very difficult, you know, really. It's hard for public works. Well, and we're kind of in a bind because, the, the, you know, we want to use a paving machine. You know, in 1928, they probably poured it all by hand. They probably had 50 guys, but nowadays we use a paving machine and they stick out on the sides and a lot of times the tree is in their way. So, you know, our costs would go up quite a bit if we couldn't use a big machine to do these. So we're kind of in a bind. You know, I'm just narrowing it down that much just to get past the trees. Um, on most of the streets, unless uh, unless there's a wider terrace, but most of these cases they have pretty big trees, and we don't want to cut the trees down. So, yeah, point taken. Well, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Alderman Vitale. Any other comments or questions from the Common Council? Seeing none from the Common Council, is there anybody in the audience that has questions or comments? Could you come up to the microphone and give us your name and address for our record, please? 
My name is Jonna Harris. Uh, I live at 2113 South 59th Street. And I'm just curious how you expect people to come up with thousands of dollars to pay randomly for these things that personally I didn't ask for, I don't want done. I don't, I, I just, I physically can't afford this. And I don't know how you expect people to come up with it. I mean, I really don't. I understand the Wisconsin state statutes on this, but I, I don't know what you want me to do. I, I don't know what you want me to do. And then on top of it to charge 4% on a 10 year plan, I mean, there should be no interest charged on that. I don't care. I don't care. There should be no interest charged to me for my ability to not scrape together this money. I mean, I'm stretched thin as it is. I'm sure I'm not the only person in these areas that are. As far as I can tell, there's people who are going to end up getting charged again. It happens frequently. I mean, that's terrible. <coughs> and uh, what are we supposed to do? I mean, we didn't get to pick this. We don't get to decide on it. We don't have any say whether it gets approved. This is our only option is to come here. And I mean, I'm trying to sell my house this summer. This happens this summer, no one's gonna be able to come look at my house. I'm screwed. I'm physically and financially screwed this year. If this gets approved, I, I don't know what else to do. I'm at a complete loss. Well, that's why we have the payment plan, the 10 year payment plan, $300. With 4%. But we're not making a profit off that. It wouldn't be it's fair. Not a, but you shouldn't be charging it at all. It wouldn't be fair to the people that pay right away because the but cost what about all the people money. who can't pay right away? I, I literally, do you want me to pull money out of my butt to pay for this? I don't know where I'm going to pay for this. I, I, don't, I don't know where I'm going to pay for this. And I'm asking you, where do I come up with this money? I'm a sole income resident. I'm stretched thin to try and be a good homeowner, a good property owner. I pay my property taxes. I'm a good law-abiding citizen. And then I have to go do this because the city's falling apart and no one thought ahead. Does anybody else wish to ask comments or questions on public hearing number one? My name is Scott McGraw. I live at 2109 South 59th Street. I'm actually Jenna's neighbor and I wanna echo a lot of her sentiments but I also wanna echo the fact that we didn't have any say in starting to plan this out. We're at the point where it sounds like they've got dates picked already. So how are we supposed to even work with our city and the people who are supposed to be representing us if we're at this point of the project already? Additionally, I work for a concrete ready mix company. Do I have an opportunity to provide my own concrete if I can get it at a cheaper price so that I don't have to be responsible for as high of a cost? I would bet the answer to that is no as well. Last, I'm in a year right now where I'm thinking about selling my house as well to get away from these types of situations, to get out of West Dallas. I have to put a new furnace in my house, I have to put a new garage door on my house. I have to put new gutters on my house. My house was hit by a car two years ago, and I'm still trying to fix my porch from when that happened. On top of it, we're talking about narrowing the streets. You've already cut down four trees on 59th Street, or you've taken the limbs off, and you're, you're bringing them down. So to say that you're not going to cut down trees, or you don't want to cut down trees, is a lie. You're already cutting them down. You did it last week. In, in front of her house and, and down the street. So to tell us that you have to take six inches off the road, to cut down trees is not being honest with us because you're already cutting them down. So at this point, how am I supposed to come up with the money on top of all the other improvements I need to do to my house? I've lived there 14 years. I've paid my taxes every year. I've paid my assessment in 2014 when you replaced the alley that I didn't ask for either and that we were informed about the public hearing a week after the hearing actually happened. So I couldn't voice my opinion then on that project. And now here I am stuck looking at another $1,800 that again, like Jenna says, I have to come out of my butt with this. So I don't understand how we can move forward with this project without more input from the taxpayers and better planning. I understand the streets are 92 years old. Why weren't they replaced in the 80s or the 90s? Where were the people planning at that point? How come we're just getting to this now where everything is crumbling apart and why was there not more forethought put into how this city manages its infrastructure? Thank you, I'm done. Does anybody else wish to? Hello, I'm Pam Zorgo. <clears throat> 6224 West Grant Street. Um, unfortunately, I echo exactly what they said. I echo exactly what they said. Um, I did have a whole list of questions here, some of which were answered in your presentation. Thank you very much. Um, I'm currently parking on a nightly basis where I pay for a parking permit to park on my street 
like this. I'm already coming out of my car and going into my car like that because the streets are already too narrow because of the snow and the ice. So to <laughs> narrow the streets is asinine, if you ask me. Um, I would also like to know um, how the footage was actually calculated, if I calculate the footage, if it will actually come out to what is on the estimate. Um, as far as how long this project will take, May through October, that's also ridiculous. When that's they did our alleys, mm -hmm. I am at home in the morning, I come home for lunch, and I come home at night, and the time that I actually saw people actually working on it from May through October was minimal. Very surprising to even think it would be 40 hours a week, much less 40 hours in the whole time frame. So to make this go from May through November is also asinine and ridiculous and expensive and inconveniencing. Sorry I'm shaking because I'm very emotional. I too don't have the money for this. Um, when they did the alley, there's already parts of it that have crumbled that I've already paid for that yes, we could have gotten together as neighbors and probably done cheaper and better and would have lasted longer. Um, dun, 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 does my property value in assessment increase in value after I spend thousands of dollars on this project? Um, and it, will it increase also if I participate in the volunteer program? Um, the traffic calming, sorry, I have a couple more. I'm sorry, I'm just very upset. This is very upsetting to me. I live, work, and play in West Dallas, and something like this makes me not want to, and that's heartbreaking to me, heartbreaking. My last question is the traffic calming. Um, on 63rd and Grant, where I live, people blow those stop signs so crazy that if I had a dollar for everyone that blew the stop sign, I could pay for this project. Thanks. Thank you. Does anybody else have comments or questions? Good evening, John Jackwick, 2225 South 55. Uh, the only problem I have is, are they going to, uh, get a hold of the uh, uh, no trucking? Right now, there's no trucking signs. You have semis going up and down the street. Well, that's, that's an issue for the police. If you see a truck, I guess you have to, Call well, what a good that is, <laughs> I mean, you know, they're gone. You can get the so, license plate or something. If it's a, you know, a lot of times if it's a frequent occurrence where they're going to someplace across the tracks there. Oh, well, that's what they're doing. I mean, we it's, can, it's we every can day. Talk, we can every talk to day. the owner or the business owner and tell them to straighten out their drivers. So if you get a license plate, figure out who it is. There are sometimes things we can do. All right. Sure. Okay, but what about sidewalks? I mean, if the sidewalks don't have to be done well, with the ladder, the, you know, we're putting the water service and the sanitary, a lot of the walk is, like I said, the, the pipes are under that walk. So we're not going to just leave one piece of sidewalk. It, it's much cheaper to do the whole sidewalk since most of it's coming out anyway. All right. So. Thank you. Thank you. Lori Bloom, 2239 South 55th. We have a duplex there. And I have tenants upstairs with babies, and that's what I'm concerned about. My granddaughter and great grandchildren are there that have, you know, with babies and, and groceries. It's hard enough hearing a one, one year old in the snow suits and everything else, you know, parking two or three blocks away and three kids and groceries and all that stuff. So where would we be parking, you know, do on you, the not? Do you have an alley? You don't have an alley? Well, there's no parking in the alley. Okay. Well, you'd be parking on Grant, or you'd be parking on Lincoln, or... Well, Grant's being done, isn't it, or... No, not that part of Grant. That not by Grant 55th, not. no. Okay, it's and just the other Grant. part is, we didn't get any paperwork in our, our um, that you said apply for this or apply oh. for that. We didn't get any kind of paperwork for that. Well, you... Uh, Where do I get the paperwork done? I, I can give you one. I can okay. give you one. Sure. Can I do it now, or... I'll, after we're done here, I'll go in the... I'll meet you in the hall. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody else have comments or questions on the public hearing number one? Hi, my name is Kathy Gallagher. I live at 2248 South 59th. Um, very recently just moved there. And my question to you is, 
Can we get copies of some of the things that are up there that can explain exactly what's going on, rather than calling the engineer who doesn't answer the phone, et cetera? Sure. 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 Any other comments or questions on public hearing number one? Okay, seeing none, we will close public hearing number one. And I will ask the clerk to read uh, public hearing number two. Resolution relative to determination of special use permit for State Fair Liquor and Food, Inc. A proposed liquor store to be located at 9127 West Lincoln Avenue. Mr. Siebel, when you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of the public hearing tonight is for a special use for a, a, a operation uh, for a, a liquor license on 92nd, 91st and, and Lincoln. Uh, the State Fair liquor store is gonna be relocated from uh, 1568 uh, 81st Street to this location. Uh, the current facility uh, is gonna be doing some substantial remodeling uh, to make, uh, to prepare for this. And also, uh, there's an existing, I believe, U.S. cellular operation there, and a beauty salon. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, the, the, uh, essentially, what it is is a convenience store that has liquor uh, located in this area here, uh, and, and also along in here, and that's less than 10% of the uh, property area. And they also sell uh, cigarettes uh, in this area, and that's also under the 5%. Uh, requirement. Uh, there's going to be a major facial facade restoration here. Uh, this portion of the building is actually set back uh, from the rest of the, of the facade. And it's going to have a brick, a, a, you know, wood veneer constructed on there uh, and the rest of the lighting and uh, facade will be also be renovated. There's also going to be some additional landscaping done to do signage on this property. Uh, the landscaping is noted here, uh, so it will be substantially improvement to what's currently there. And also the, the side will be relocated uh, from back in here into this area here. Uh, as currently proposed, it sets inside the vision triangle uh, so people can't see, so we'll have them set that back just a little bit, but that should be able to be uh, just fine. The plan commission has reviewed this project and recommended approval, and we've received one letter of, uh, in support and one letter uh, objecting. If you have any additional questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Stiebel. Are there any comments or questions from the council on public hearing number two? Seeing none, are there any comments or questions from the members of the audience on public hearing number two? Once again, we ask you to give us your name and address for our record and sign in if you hadn't. My name is Serafina Scholl. Um, my husband and I have lived at 2559 South 92nd for five years. Um, you know, we, we cross that corner every day and we always wonder, oh, I want something to go in there. I want something to go in there. You know, we love walking to Cousins and um, I walk to the hospital for uh, treatment sometimes. And um, unfortunately, it's just really uh, a bummer that a liquor store next to a bar within close proximity of a bar is coming in. I just think um, you've done a lot of work to promote West Dallas as uh, in its changing image and high school students go up and down those streets. A lot of them walk to <coughs> Central. Um, high school students will always find alcohol but I'm really disappointed that a business where they couldn't provide job, job opportunities for the students um, isn't going in there like a subway or something. Um, I just, we got robbed in 2016. Um, you know, I just sort of believe that it's just not good to have a liquor store at that corner. People are coming out of the hospital in different state of mind. I just am really disappointed in this choice. Thank you. Thank you.
Good evening. My name is Greg Smith. I sat 2115 South 80th. The gentleman is trying to open up this establishment. It's a family-owned business. He has two young children. Beer and liquor is not the main item of this store. It's going to be good sandwiches, food. I mean, it's really basically not an alcoholic store. Alcohol will be sold there, but in a very small quantity. We're here to help the community, not make it disappear. Um, we just want a chance to be able to work with the community, put in a decent business, and help each other. We're not trying to open up a bar or a liquor store. And I appreciate you people taking your time to listen to me. Uh, I can pretty much guarantee you this family I've known for over a year and a half, going on two years, they're hardworking and they're there to open up a successful business. And I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions on public hearing number two? My name is Michael Tudrick. I moved into 2559 South 92nd Street about six years ago. I'm a transplant from Ohio. And one of the things that really made me pick West Dallas as my home is I wanted to put down roots in Wisconsin and make this my lifelong home. And I really valued a place that had places as a business and walking distance, just like to pick up what you need. And hopefully eventually I'll have the chance to have kids now that I'm married to Serafina. And I want the kids to be able to have places where they could go to buy a pack of gum or buy, buy things they need after school. So that was, one of the biggest factors in deciding on West Dallas. And for me, I mean, I've loved the way the city's like plowed the streets this winter. I've been very organized with projects, communicated um, as far as like where they are in the plowing. So I know any business that comes in that brings the tax revenue is gonna be good for the city and is gonna help. But at the same time, I am concerned at that intersection because you have West Dallas Central High School right there with kids walking home. You also have the middle school where kids walk through that intersection every day. And it, it really does concern me because liquor stores are a potential target of robberies. I'm just down the street at Oklahoma and 92nd Street. The bank there has been robbed multiple times. Um, there's the liquor store that's on Cleveland up by 84th that's been robbed. So for me, my concern is the safety. And, and I really have no doubt that I love local business owners buying from people in the community. So I'm sold on that, but I'm just really concerned about the safety, whether or not we're gonna have to have an extra police presence to keep the kids safe and really make it a safe area and, and balance those things. So personally, I don't know. I, I want the business, but I, I'm very concerned because I know there's, there's problems, so. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions on public hearing number two? Okay, seeing none, we will close public hearing number two and I will ask our clerk to read public hearing number three. <coughs> Resolution relative to determination of special use permit to establish a restaurant with drive through within the existing multi-tenant commercial building located at 1606 South 84th Street, submitted by Pete Agnos, DBA Agnos <coughs> Enterprises, on behalf of JNL Enterprises of Wisconsin. Thank you. Mr. Stiebel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as the clerk noted on 84th Street, there's the, the row of, of uh, uh, old urban, interurban trolley line buildings, that's what these here are. Uh, we'll be also asking the applicant to combine both of these lots. But the hours of operation are 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. seven days a week. It's gonna be as yet unnamed, but a, a pizza Italian cuisine. Uh, 3,100 square feet. Uh, Johnny V's for a point of reference is at the other end. It'll be about that same size with approximately 20 employees. Uh, there'll be uh, 
a, a party room uh, and a game room, and then the restaurant, about, six, about, about 64, and then the kitchen prep area. The um, prior tenant, I believe it was a credit union, they had a drive-through window here. They'll st still be able to use that. It won't be a drive up and order, but it'll be a drive up and pick up your pizza at, at, at the time. Uh, there'll be extensive landscaping. Uh, because of the traffic conflict points around this curve here, this uh, particular driveway will be closed and then landscaped and along some additional landscaping along the perimeter of the property and on the south part of the property. Uh, the Plan Commission has reviewed this project, has recommended approval, <coughs> and we've received no objections to date. If you have any additional questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Stiebel. Are there any questions from the Common Council on this item? Mayor Devine. Alderman Weigel. Um, I applaud Mr. Agnos and his reuse of this particular spot, but I do have one question. Are, are we gonna allow beer to go in the drive through window? I don't think we've ever done that anywhere in our community. I, with the licensing, I know we're not approving that license right now and all that, but I guess my, con and, and whatever license he gets, if he gets licensed with alcohol, would allow him to do beer and wine to go in unopened containers. And I just wanted to understand if we were thinking about that would be going out the drive through window and I guess I wouldn't be very comfortable with that. That's a whole separate issue that we're not exploring yeah. now. Right now it's only gonna be food that'll be transported through the window. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the council? Mr. Stiebel. Alderman May. Oh, Mayor Devine first, Mr. Stiebel. Can you bring up the, the previous slide? I just wanna look at it. Okay, and then to Alderman Weigel's point, I think in the special use, we could probably prohibit the transfer of alcohol through the drive-through, I would think. So, thanks. Any other comments, questions from the council? Seeing none, are there any comments or questions from the members of the audience? Okay, we will close public hearing number three, and I will ask the clerk to read public hearing number four. Resolution relative to determination of special use permit to establish a catering service, food production limited, and restaurant within the existing building located at 7412 West Greenfield Avenue. Mr. Stiebel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as many of you know, that, that this is the current home of, uh, uh, of D.C. Ellington, uh, it, it noted here in blue. Uh, Double B's restaurant is located here, and they're also they're going to be acquiring this building and to make it into a catering operation. Uh, because it serves food, it requires a special use, and that's the purpose of the public uh, hearing this evening. They're going to be making substantial modifications to the property, as well as interior and exterior. Uh, this is a partial floor, floor plan uh, off the uh, Greenfield Avenue will be uh, room for about 60 tables seated uh, or up to 85 if they do a standing kind of a catering event at, lo at the location. Uh, this is the rotisserie area as noted above there. And this is part of the, oops, this is part of the kitchen. Oh, go back there. This is the kitchen area that will be used for this particular facility. Uh, they're going to be removing the, the mansard roof, and they're going to be realigning the doors. As you can see here, they kind of set back, and they'll become flush, and it'll be more consistent with uh, the Double B's restaurant. They'll be putting windows in uh, and uh, removing the, the, the signage and painting the, the, the current uh, shake uh, roof line uh, and bringing bronze windows <coughs> and new brick, new brick veneer. They'll also be doing extensive remodeling to the rear of the building as well as constructing a refuge enclosure. Uh, landscaping of the project is, will be similar to what they've currently done along the front of their building uh, because there's really no land mass to do any, any uh, uh, la landscaping on the, the fed itself. Uh, in the back of the lot is adjacent to a public parking lot, uh, so they won't be required to have any additional parking. Uh, the plan commission has recommended approval and we received no objections to date. If you have any additional questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions from the council on this item? Mayor Devine. Alderman Weigel. I would just like to voice my support for this project. Um, I'm actually a 
neighbor I live directly across the street. Uh, very happy to see an existing business that is currently a tenant, and he has enough faith in his business and in West Dallas, downtown West Dallas, and the city in general to invest in buying the property there. Um, I think Ellington's were there about 40 years, and they had a really good, different business, but uh, they're, they're going to be missed. Um, I understand that they're relocating to 8,000 block of Lincoln, so Ellington business will still be accessible to the community. But again, um, I look forward to Mark Timber and his family and his employees expanding and doing even better. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Mayor Devine. Alderperson Ranky. I would agree with the, uh, Alderman <coughs> Weigel. I do have a question for you, John. Are they going to expand the patio area in the back? They currently have no not at this time not in this action are there plans for it they could be but it's not in this plan i see thank you thank you any other questions from the common council see none are there any questions or comments from the members of the audience I'm Gene Eggert. I'm the architect for the project, and I just want to answer your. I'm sorry. Can question. you can you give us an address? For just can be your business oh, address sure. or. Seventy four twenty nine Roosevelt Road, Hartford, Wisconsin. Thank you. Just to answer your question, there are no plans to expand the patio. That would the outdoor seating that would stay the way it is. And there, the building, the new building is strictly for catering and interior dining just wanted to close that up thank you are there any other comments from the audience on this item <coughs> seeing none we will close public hearing number four and i will ask our clerk to read public hearing number five 2018 <coughs> 19 class b beer license application number 2654 of BTH Pizza LLC, Paul S. Thompson, agent, DBA Blaze Pizza for premises located at 10730 West National Avenue. It's a new non-existing location in regard to exceeding the quota. Thank you, Mr. Siebel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this public hearing is to consider whether the Common Council wants to exceed their current quota. Uh, the plan commission approved the site and landscaping plan and architectural in January and the council has approved the special use. This is the old site of the uh, 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 tire store right on uh, Highway 100 in, in Cleveland. It's a, certainly a dramatic change to what used to be there. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you. Any uh, questions from the common council? Yeah, Mayor Devine. Alderman Haas. And, uh, John, it's my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, Blaze Pizza has hundreds of locations uh, nationwide and they serve beer or uh, most of their location locations nationwide this is part of their business model is that correct that's correct okay thank you thank you any other questions from the council no questions from the council are there any comments or questions from the members of the audience Okay, seeing none, we will close public hearing number five, and I will ask our clerk to read public hearing number six. 2018-19, Class B Tavern License, <clears throat> application number 2662 of Top Dog Enterprises, LLC, Ronald L. Mellentine, agent, uh, DBA Crawdaddy's Road Roadhouse, for premises located at 9638 West National Avenue, it's a new non-existing location in regard to exceeding the quota. Thank you. Mr. Stiebel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as many as you recall, uh, the, the old Shakey's restaurant that was at this location, uh, I, I think the pyramids may have been constructed faster than this renovation has taken place, but they're both of the same high quality. Uh, I think once you see the inside, you'll be quite impressed with the workmanship that was done on the, the property. Uh, it did take four long years to get this uh, completed, and it wasn't a freeway project, but uh, we're glad that it finally got to this particular situation. The plan commission approved uh, the special use and the common council approved the special use in 2015. And if you have any additional questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you. Any questions from the common council? Mayor Devine. 
Alderman Chapleski. Uh, John, are you aware if they have their occupancy permit yet? Uh, they have a, uh, a temporary occupancy permit. There's one item uh, that needs to be done that's been ordered, but the building department has advised me they have, have issued a temporary occupancy permit. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the Common Council? Mr. Mayor. Alderman May. I remember to do it this time. <laughs> uh, Mr. Stiebel, special use permits, when they're approved, don't they expire after a certain amount of time? As, they're, as long as they continually offer or, or make progress and, and uh, work it on the property, they do not. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the Common Council? Oh, my. Mayor Devine. All the person Ranky? Yeah, 2015, was there a good reason why it has taken so long for them to <coughs> get approval? I think the primary reason is that the owner wanted to do the work himself and did a very quality job, but that was what he decided to do. And he's been working four years? Mm -hmm. I see. Unusual. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the Common Council on public hearing number six? Seeing none, are there any questions from the audience on public hearing number six? All right. That will conclude our public hearings this evening. <coughs> We are now going to move on to item E on our agendas, which is citizen participation. This is the opportunity for members of the public to address the council for a 30 minute period. We ask that you try to keep your comments to five minutes so enough people get a chance to speak. Uh, does anybody wish to address the council under citizen participation this evening? We ask that you give us your name and address for our record. All right, I'm Steve Janacek. My address is 1220 South 122nd Street. All right, and I'm here to talk about um, wireless cell phone signals. I know we have a lot of them strapped to the water tower. I don't really know much about um, the rest of the infrastructure around here, but uh, these are very health challenging. We shouldn't underestimate um, the risks these pose. And the future is gonna continue to bring these risks. They, um, I don't know what's going to happen in this city again. I don't know the past or the future, but in other cities, they're bringing this fifth generation wireless internet to the towns, and they want to put uh, wireless towers on every street corner or every fifth house. And I'm just here to warn us in the future that the, these wireless signals, non-NATAM, EMFs, electromagnetic frequencies, are very health challenging and um, they haven't been studied enough. It's often been called the new smoking, where back in the day doctors would say smoking's good for you and everyone thought smoking was okay just because the, you know, the right studies hadn't been done, it hasn't been brought into the knowledge just how harmful these things are. So one example I'll give you is uh, breast cancer. Women who carry their cell phone in their bra have been found to get breast cancer from that. And you know that differentiates it from normal breast cancer because it's in a different area. Um, there are also higher suicide rates among workers who work on these towers. So I'm here more to warn about the future. The 5G thing is a very real issue that many cities in, this, in the US are facing. But also to look into this for ourselves. Um, I, don't, I try not to carry my cell phone on me because like I said, it's very health challenging. Uh, turn off your Wi-Fi at night. I mean, it's important for us to start taking health more seriously. 
I mean, it's great that we have 2.7 million to spend on streets. You know, lots of great things are happening, but I look around and I see our health deteriorating. I mean, every day it seems like ob obesity rates are up and cancer rates are up. And I thought we're supposed to be getting better as a society. And in this area, health-wise, I, I see we're getting worse. So right in line with the other things I've come here for, chemtrails, geoengineering, fluoride in the water, uh, these wireless non-native EMF signals are dangerous. Um, and we need to start worrying about our health first. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Does anybody else wish to address the council under citizen participation this evening? Sarah Fina 2559 South 92nd. I just wanted to state, please put something in the old Parthenon, rest, uh, Parthenon store on 92nd and Cleveland and other things down from 84th and 92nd in Cleveland because it's a boring walk to McCarty Park in the summertime. And I just see, see things, you know, that could go in there where I could spend my money. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address the council under citizen participation? Okay, seeing none, we will close citizen participation. <coughs> Item F will be the uh, announcement of our standing committees. They will be meeting during recess. The room numbers are listed on page two of your agendas. Moving to item G, the mayor's report. Um, I just have one thing this evening. Um, before the meeting tonight, Alderperson Ranky and I had a quick um, reception for the members of the Celebrations Committee. Those of you that are still here, could you stand up so I can embarrass you? <laughs> <laughs> we recently um, kind of retooled this committee to a more broad events committee that's working on a lot of the events that are going on in the city regarding the food trucks and the a la carte and the concerts and the parks and things like that. But this committee, most of the people you see standing there have been uh, on this committee with Alderperson Ranky for 15 years, and they have been working on the Veterans Giving Tree in December, the um, Santa's Cafe during the Christmas Parade, Independence Day festivities. They have done so much, and, and this is a committee that it doesn't just sit in meetings. They're actually out there putting in volunteer hours on their weekends, on their Sundays, on their evenings. So I just want to take a moment along with Alderperson Ranky to publicly thank them and recognize them for all their years of service. Does conclude the uh, mayor's report this evening. Do we have any reports from the older persons? Mayor Devine. Older person Oitnier. I just want to remind everybody, uh, specifically those in the Fairview Park neighborhood, that we have a Fairview Park Neighborhood Association meeting this Thursday, the seventh at six thirty, and it will be at Benno's. Thank you. My pleasure. Any other reports from the older persons this evening? Mayor Devine. Alderperson Ranke. I just want to make mention that I was asked to take part in the Reading Across America uh, program for the schools. I, I, uh, I read some books to the children at Franklin School. I must say they were very respectful and very well behaved and they had a lot of questions for me. Uh, unusual questions like how old are you <laughs> and, do, <laughs> and also do I have pets <laughs> it was a, a remarkable experience but I have to say that leaving I stopped at the office and who should I meet but a Ted Perry from Channel 6 very nice gentleman uh, and he remarked that he um, he had indicated that we, he had information that we were basically in the midst of a renaissance in our city. And he, he commended the mayor and the council for doing a good job on, on this, 
this particular area. And I thought that was very nice of him to, to emphasize that we were doing a good job. And he was very, very proud of the city of West Dallas, he had indicated. So you never know who you're gonna meet. And uh, reading to the children is definitely an adventure. I certainly enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, older persons reports this evening? Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. I move for approval of the minutes of the Common Council regular meeting of February 19th, 2019. Second. There is a motion with a second by Alderman Vitale. Are there any corrections or adjustments to the minutes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Item J, um, items not referred to committee. I'll ask for a motion to refer items eight, nine, and 10 to our city attorney. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, standing committee reports, we have none this evening. Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. I move that we stand in recess until conclusion of the committee meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? We are in recess. Ted Perry is wise. <laughs>